Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first story is titled, X left me for a good friend, so now I'm going to meet and work for their favorite artist. Last year, my partner of many years, who I was ready to propose to and marry, and one of our good friends started getting far closer than I was really comfortable with during a period I was working long and hard to provide for us. She started getting distant and they were cozying up. Eventually, they tried to guilt me into accepting a polyamorous relationship, which I wasn't cool with, and when I ultimately put my foot down on the idea, she ended up choosing them over me. My ex tried to turn the entire friend group against me, which didn't work, but did scar me mentally. And I found out a lot of other terrible things she had been doing, like using my money for parties or spending it on her now current partner slash ex-friend. She consistently trashed me on social media when I never talked bad about her, even after all the hurt and pain I went through. I went through a massive depressive episode that I'm still struggling with today, losing my business, sanity, and even my human will to live. It was the darkest time of my life for this and some other reasons, but I kept reminding myself that I have to outlive my enemies. And a life well lived is the best revenge one can have. So I set the plan in motion. There is a very famous DJ my ex had a huge tattoo for and absolutely loves more than anything, besides Molly, probably. And her new partner is a massive fan as well. I believe they even traveled to go see said artist recently. Travel was our big thing I got her into. And while I had this plan for a while, I kicked into overdrive and finally got it done after finding that out. I worked many years as a videographer slash photographer in the touring music world. It was the dream that I eventually gave up being at home for, and focused on building our relationship more as I got older. During my career, I worked with some decently known artists and built a few important connections. I opened up my old contacts list and went down the rabbit hole until I was able to get in contact with the DJ's team and get set up to be paid handsomely for doing tour work, running fan meetups, managing their Instagram content, etc. My work and name will be promoted all over their socials for my ex and her partner to see, and you best believe I'll be taking plenty of selfies. And while my original motivation was pure spite, I am super excited to be following my dreams again and getting another opportunity to be a creative, plus meeting so many amazing new people on the road again. The next story is titled, After insulting my team and myself, you want me to help tie your pool to the car? In college, I used to work part-time at a popular retail chain in Canada. Let's call it Canadian Fire. One very, very hot summer Saturday, we had a run-on pool. Everyone and their brother wanted something they could fill with water to sit in, and the rush started at 8 a.m. As you can imagine, the hard plastic cheap pools were flying off the shelves, starting with the first customer through the door. Like any college kid, I was hungover from the night before and just trying to make it through the day. My girlfriend at the time was a cashier, and she suggested we get a kiddie pool to sit in when we got off work later that night. So I snagged one of the last pools and was dragging it to the back to keep until my lunch when I could buy it. A customer, let's call him Hugh Jass, saw me grabbing the last pool and demanded I bring it back so that he can purchase it. I told him no, I was setting it aside for myself and there were plenty of those pools in a box he was more than welcome to purchase. Well, Hugh went bananas, started swearing, cussing, and yelling for a manager. Finally, the manager on duty heard the noise, came over, and very begrudgingly told me the customer was entitled to the pool because I hadn't purchased it yet. I get it, and up until this point I was mad, mostly because I couldn't chill with my girl in her bikini, drinking beer in the pool, but in this case the customer was right. And then it happened. The customer looked at me, smiled a Cheshire Cat smile, and said, the customer is always right, which is why you work here and I don't. I saw red, but with my manager there, I couldn't say much. Hugh then looked me dead in the eye and said, I bet you want to help me carry this out to my car and tie it to my roof. So I stifle my anger and carry Hugh's pool out to his car. Here comes the petty revenge. I asked Hugh to please get in the car and put all the windows down so that I can safely tie the pool to his roof. I take some of that really strong twine you use for packing and proceed to wrap the pool with twine through the windows, all four, and secure the pool to the roof. As I tied the last knot, real knots, nothing easy to undo, Hugh looks at me and says, don't feel badly, I always win, as he drives off. I wish I was there when Hugh Jass got home and tried to open his car doors, only to find I tied all four of them shut. Not sure how his very large frame was ever able to get out of the car, but... 
Every time I see a car with something tied to its roof, I wonder if someone else just got their petty revenge. The next story is titled, HOA towed my classic car and chopped down my trees. I got the HOA disbanded. I want to start off by saying I am not the kind of person that usually gets aggressive or even upset. When the HOA pushed me to the point I was determined to get them disbanded, you can imagine that they finally crossed a big line. I was raised in a world where I had to work hard or I wasn't going to get anywhere in my life. My family didn't have a ton of money, but from them I got a strong sense of moral values and knowledge of hard work. Through high school, I found myself mowing lawns in order to afford to send in college applications. The hard work paid off when I graduated from law school and knew I could enjoy my life in a way I never could as a child. I got a home in a nice neighborhood and I didn't know much about what an HOA was in my personal life. I loved my property and it had some of my favorite looking trees in the world, dogwoods, that would bloom beautifully in the spring. Besides a house, I wanted to buy myself something really special that I had always wanted. An old classic car that I would see in car shows and dream about sitting inside of one day. I got it. And while it needed a little bit of work and love, I was happier than I had ever been before in my life. Leave it to the HOA to jump in and start raining on my parade. It wasn't even anything major at first, just small problems that they wanted to complain about. They told me that I had to take care of my weeds and that my mailbox needs to be closed at all times. They even told me that my door couldn't be painted red, which made no sense since I had a black door. Also, they complained the paint job on my house was cracking and insisting that I pay to get it redone so that the neighborhood looks nice. It wasn't a cheap thing to do, and gave me a bad taste in my mouth. The letters never stopped about these small petty things, but I didn't want to start a fight. I complied the best I could and hoped that they would just back off. The next letter I got was one telling me two things. I'll just talk about them one at a time so there isn't any kind of confusion. The first thing was that the dogwood trees had to go because they didn't look good. It wasn't spring, so they weren't in bloom and pretty anymore. I was upset about this, but decided that over the weekend I would find somebody to come and take the trees out. The HOA sent a group the next morning to start ripping out my trees, and I was angry with the nerve they had to do this to me. They had been walking all over me, and I had had it from them. Backing up a little bit, the other thing in the letter was telling me I couldn't park my classic car in the driveway because they said it looked like a piece of junk and was bothering everybody. Between the disrespect and sending people to take down my trees, I was fully angry. I was going to get my revenge, and while the type of law I studied had nothing to do with HOAs, I went and looked up as much as I could. Getting rid of an HOA wasn't the easiest thing in the world, and unless it happened internally, the only sure way that I found was if the majority of the neighborhood voted for them to disband. I had set up my plan and was getting the ball rolling by putting on a nice suit and going around the neighborhood to talk to people. I wanted to find out, first of all, if anybody else was getting harassed by the HOA, or if it was only me. I was happy by the sheer amount of people that didn't slam the door in my face and instead talked to me. I heard some horror stories similar to mine and that most people were fed up with them. I asked if they could get rid of the HOA, would they? And most said they would love to not live in an HOA. They didn't know the laws, and I told them before inviting them to come to the next meeting where I would be initiating a vote. I did make one fatal flaw, and that was not putting my classic car into a place with a lock for safekeeping. While I was out rallying against the HOA, they had towed my car illegally off of my property. I was lucky enough that one call to the towing company and I was able to get my car back before anything had happened, and store it in my garage away from the HOA. My plan was in place to take them down, and the day of the next HOA meeting, so many people came that they had to change the venue location. Usually, very few people show up to these meetings, and in a neighborhood of only about 50 homes, everybody showing up meant it was a little crazy. The meeting went, I guess, like a normal one, until it was asked if anybody had new business to bring up. I stood right up and said that I wanted to put the HOA being disbanded to a vote. The board members actually laughed in my face and told me to sit down. I pulled out my folder and stated the law right to them, giving them no choice but to allow for the vote. It was long, and each household had to be accounted for. Those that didn't show up to vote basically gave the HOA a vote to stay how it was. At the end, though, 35 of 50 properties decided that we would be better off without an HOA existing. 
They wanted to argue again that the only thing we could do was actually elect a new president if we disagreed with the HOA. They wanted to play that kind of game with me, and it was okay because I had studied for every single curveball they might have thrown my way. They knew they were wrong, but fighting it would take time and money. Instead, I said that I was running for president, and since I got more votes than the current one, I was elected in. Then, as my first and only act as HOA president, I shut down the HOA from the inside. At that point, nobody could actually stop it. Being raised to work hard taught me to also think outside the box, which is what ended up taking them down in the end. For an HOA to start over in our neighborhood, they would need to go through an entire process and get 50% approval rating again. I don't think that's going to happen for a while. In the meantime, I can finally enjoy my house and car without being harassed about everything. Plus, if I really wanted to, I could put on my resume that I was president of the HOA, and just not mention how long that actually lasted. They tried to abuse their power and instead ended up losing everything to a man that they had just pushed over the edge. I even repainted my door red just so I can laugh in their faces about now getting to do anything I wanted with my house. The next story is titled, If you don't like it here, find a job and move out. 2.5 years back, I, 20 at the time, non-binary, was still living with my parents. I'm a full-time bachelor student. I started university right after high school at the age of 18. My mother and I got into a fight. I don't remember for what, exactly. In the heat of the fight, she said, If you don't like it here, find a job and move out. Enter here, malicious compliance. Within a month, I found a job and moved out with my significant other, 19 at the time, non-binary. Ever since, my mother has been demanding for me to come over at my parents' place once a week, every week. Today, I live with now my fiancé, our cat, and my service dog in the same place we moved out originally those years ago. My mother has become more careful with her words towards me. The last story is titled, You Talk Trash Behind My Back, You Fail Your Exams. First of all, English is not my first language, so please be gentle with me. When I was 17, W, I was the typical outsider in class. Most of my school days in high school, I was bullied and or alone. Therefore, my self-esteem and confidence were at an all-time low. The only thing I was confident in was my ability to learn. After my high school days, I wanted a change, and so I went to a business school. I wanted a clear start, at a place where nobody would know me and my past. There, I met Mary, 17, W. She was the exact opposite of me, and out of all people in class, she talked to me. Excited was an understatement for the feelings I had at that time. I thought that would be the typical story of an extrovert that picked up the introvert. Boy, was I wrong. Our little friend group got bigger when Celine, 70W, from our class and Christine, 17W, from my Spanish classes joined us a little later. Midterms came and it doesn't look good for Mary. She almost fails most of them. So we made a little study group with Mary, Christine, and me. Celine worked most of the time for a burger place after school and had good grades, so she passed. Mary slowly but surely got better grades and we all had a good time. Mary also visited me at my parents' place and all things were good. Six months before our final exam, I got sick for three days, and Celine and Mary were alone in school. When I was in school again, Mary got sick, and Celine told me that Mary told her that she only befriended me because I was smart and some other things about my home and family. After that, I was devastated. But I made my mind up for my revenge plan. Mary told me that she met her new boyfriend at a party, therefore she doesn't have much time for our study group left. Every time when she has time, however, I was unavailable, so she and Christine studied alone. Christine was okay without me, she had much better grades than Mary. Mary's grades dropped fast. Final exams come and go, and Mary fails all her exams. When she got her grades, she looked me in the eyes, and I smiled. She knew what I did, and she leaves furious. The good thing was that I learned how to be confident and talk more to people. Also, I met my best friend Marina only half a year later. We have our 13th anniversary together this year. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.